Whenever we talk about Olympics, they have their own rules. First of all, they don't happen annually. They happen every four years, sometimes every five years, like last year. There are way more nerves, quote unquote, involved than with world championships. Why? Because not a lot of people have a lot of chances to do well at Olympics. And although Olympic Games, in my humble opinion, kind of lose their importance, there is still quite something. All right, I gotta clarify a few things. So, the reason why Olympic Games are still so important and probably will always be important, at least in Europe, is because the funding systems work that way. Uh, if you can have boats at the Olympics or qualify for the Olympics, you simply get more money. This is how it works here. So Olympic sports are heavily funded and Olympic boat classes and rowing are funded and non-Olympic boat classes are simply not. Now, understandably so, nerves are at their limits and that affects everything. So when I talk about technique now and my assumption on what is faster or not in the men's Olympic singles called final of 2021 in Tokyo. We have to keep in mind that there are way more, way more stories involved than just technique. It's physique, it's the mindset, it's nerves, it's personal stories, it's being well, not being well. And these are all things outside of my knowledge. What I can do is look at the technique and look at basic technique principles at probably the highest level men's single calling has to offer. Now let's jump right into it. On a side note, I cannot show you the full race. Olympic footage is heavily protected. It is not easy to just record my screen and talk about it. So what I have to do is show you an occasional screen or a screenshot and I recommend you go on YouTube and watch your local version of the race. That entire race features essentially four boats that contest for the medals. We see two athletes who do use their upper body or their upper body swing at a more or less late stage of the drive. And we see two athletes who use their upper body quite early or not as much at all. I'm talking about Svetlana Nielsen from Denmark, Damian Martin from Croatia, Kjetil Boch from Norway, and I'm talking about Stefanos and Tuskos from Greece. Greece has never won a man's single skull Olympic gold. So Tuskos is the first one ever to do so. The interesting thing is that his rowing style and None of the four rowing styles um, from a picture book point of view are perfect, but it doesn't really matter. If you are in the Olympic final, what matters is who's more effective and more efficient in comparison to the others. I personally do consider all of their physique to be somewhat comparable. I don't know their erg scores and the ergs don't float. So on the water, they must be very close to each other. The interesting thing is if you compare them side by side, you see Ketil Boch and Sveri Nielsen, the two athletes who don't use their upper body a lot at the finish, there is almost no backswing um, to lead quite early. And the reason why this is the case, in my humble opinion, is that if you don't lean back a lot, you avoid one of the common mistakes a lot of rowers make, is that they're always, they're always inclined to sit on the rear part of their seat, not so much on the front part of their seat, which means the pelvis never gets to rock over nicely. Now, if you don't lean back a lot right from the start, so from the recovery on, it's much easier to get a nice rock over and a pelvis tilt. And I think this favors the two Scandinavian athletes. So it's better Nielsen from Denmark, who's actually from Ferry Island, and Katie Boch from Norway. I think this is one of the reasons why they are in the lead. Their rowing style is more fluid, and I don't think it is as energy consuming as the rowing style of Damien Martin or Stefanos Ntuskos. However, Ntuskos and Damien Martin have an ace up their sleeves. The way they row allows them to generate a lot more boat speed, but it also costs a lot more energy. And I think this is the reason why Damien Martin is able to pull ahead of Sveri Nielsen at the finish. Mid-race, if you compare the stroke rates, Adame Martin strokes a comfortable 34 and he sits in fourth place for most of the time. Ball, who's in the lead, strokes a 37, but so does Ntuskos. And Sven Nielsen strokes a 37 as well. So Ntuskos, Ball and Nielsen are pretty much side by side, as you can see in this shot right here. It's about three minutes into the race, two minutes 45 somewhat, and you see that Ntuskos now catches up. 
So interesting, if you look at the stroke rates early on, Ndoskos was 1 minute and 17 seconds behind Sverdinizen, who was in the lead at the 500 meter mark, and Ketilborg almost on par with him. So that's 400 of a second that separated Boch and Sverdinizen, the two leading boats. Dami Martin was in third place, a second behind. Ndoskos is in fourth. His style allows him to get more speed out of 37 strokes per minute than Borg or Sperry Nielsen get. And I'm pretty sure I'm right about this one. If you use more upper body swing per stroke effectively, you will get more meters per stroke with the same stroke rate. However, it does cost more energy. So you have to be physically able to do this. At the 750, Tuskos is still behind half a boat length. But now the stroke rates match up and now they're at 37. And you can see that at roughly 800 meters, Ntuskos starts to gain on the two Scandinavian athletes. Remember, the two Scandinavian athletes don't use their upper body as much as Scandinavian athletes are. Is Denmark part of Scandinavia? I don't think so. But it's certainly North European. So Ntuskos is able to gain more meters per stroke with the same stroke rate, equally having a 37 now at roughly 900 meters into the race. And this is where he takes the lead. All he has to do, quote unquote, is have the same stroke rate using more upper body leverage than the athlete from Denmark and the athlete from Norway. I should probably clarify that. So it's not like, yeah, well, Tuskos just has to keep the same stroke rate and it's all good and it's all alright. That's nonsense. So with with the style that Tuskos has, it's doing a 37 is is faster than doing a 37. Uh, with the style that uh, Sveri Nielsen or Ketri Boch have. But at 37 strokes a minute, you're also significantly faster, and this is essentially what's happening. But it is not equally... How to describe it? It's not... As it is not as fluid, because he puts in way more punch every drive. A 37 with the Intrusco style or Dami Martin style means a lot more speed, but also a lot more work. So essentially, he put in more work. But there's a trade-off. You cannot just bring the stroke rate up endlessly. So there's a limit. How how high you want to go? You want to, Would you like to do a 45? And the thing is, higher stroke rates do not get you the same speed advantage um, as, as a nice upper body swing during the drive. That's at least my experience. So if you, if you row a very fluid and smooth 37, it feels great and you can bring up the rate to a 42 maybe 45 but the speed increase will not be as significant as doing is going from a 34 to a 37 38 with a nice upper body punch mid drive when the blades are in a perfect angle to attack is it more exhausting yes it is but it's also a lot faster so again it comes down to physique but it's not like yeah well um it's only physique it's technique and physique. It's having the right technique that suits your physique. And this is what is true with Tuskos and also with Damian Martin. And this is what gets him the lead. At the 1000 meter mark, Tuskos is in the lead for the first time by half a second. So it took him 250 meters, having the same stroke rate as everybody else, to gain the lead. Now, that's also more energy consuming. And the question is, can you sustain this? Tuskos had the physique to do so. So it takes, just like with Randall foils, there is no free speed. But you can load up the blades more and you're faster. So if you use your upper body, and you can see this very well here at 1150 meters. So at the 1200, about the 1200 meter mark, and Tuskos pays for his lead a bit. And you can see that now Nielsen and Borg try to push back. So Tuskos needs a moment to breathe. You can see that um, both Nielsen and Borg try to do something so they push harder and they maybe bring the rate up a bit i can't say for sure but i have the impression that their stroke rate went up by about one stroke per minute you have to know that sweaty nielsen and Ketil Borg did a lot of training together this is my humble point of knowledge maybe you can correct me if i'm wrong here so they knew each other interestingly they were almost equally fast now tuskos has to work quite hard that's a that's a gamble he does here so he does take a gamble and he does risk something. He's in the lead by half a boat length. And you can see he's working hard, but everybody's working hard mid-race Olympic A final. Now, his advantage is that at the 1500 meter mark, 
he gets out more per stroke than everybody else. So all quarter what he has to do is keep the stroke rate and his style will make him advance. He's extended his lead now by two tenths of a second. Damian Martin trading in fourth. Secure fourth, but fourth. And that's not the place you want to be at the Olympics. And now comes the interesting part. Nduskos will not be caught anymore. It's close, but he will not be caught. His style allows him to get more meters per stroke and therefore now move away from Ketil Borg. Sverre Nielsen and Borg, the only thing they can do is gradually bring up the pace, but there is no exponential speed gain throughout the drive because they are missing the upper body. It's like rowing legs, arms, legs, arms, legs, arms, and that's what Sverre Nielsen does. And I think, from a, just from a technique point of view, this is what may cost Sverre Nielsen his medal, his Olympic medal. You need extra punch within the drive, especially in a single, if you want to pull ahead, so in order to sprint. So in Tuskos, now 250 meters to go to the finish line, you see him sprinting ahead. He gained half a length, and that's what his style allowed him to do. Neither Borg nor Nielsen were able to match this. Is it a matter of physique? Of course, you need power to roll certain technique. But I think it is a matter of technique, and then the physique will adapt to your principle of rowing technique. And now you see the same thing happening with Damian Martin and Sverre Nielsen. Sverre Nielsen is still in third, and now Damian Martin pushes ahead in a couple of strokes. It is a capability to be so explosive, but it is not just a matter of your muscle fibers. It is a matter of how your technique works. If you add your upper body to the motion, you are able to generate a lot more boat speed, but it also does cost a lot more energy. If you preserve your energies until the last couple of strokes, and this is what Tommy Martin did, you're able to pull ahead just enough. And this is why Tommy Martin became third. Was it close? Very close. Is it possible that there were other parameters than that? Very well likely. I don't know all the stories. What I can tell you from a technique point of view and working on a viral a lot with force curves and simply analyzing a lot of videos and coaching a lot of people, there are styles that pay off if you know you have the ability to sprint. Now, interestingly, Ntuskos didn't sprint, or did he? He actually did sprint. He had one major push at the 750 to the 1000, and that got him to lead. And then he had another major push from the 1600 meter mark to the 1800 meter mark. This is where he got clear water over everybody else. And I think it was his style that allowed him the drastic speed changes and also position changes. This is something you cannot do if you don't use your upper body. It is smooth and overall very, very quick and fast what Borg and Sveta Nielsen do. But their ability to create sudden speed changes is simply not as strong as it is with athletes who do use their upper body quite dominantly. And if there's one thing we can learn from that, using your upper body dominantly at the finish does cost energy. But if you've got the physique to pull it off, this can very well be the deciding factor between making a medal or not making a medal, or making gold or not making gold. With the disclaimer that there are many more factors involved that I cannot possibly know. I now recommend you go and watch the entire single skull video and look at it. And I would love to see your comments in the comment section or write me a message. You can reach me on Instagram, you can reach me on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course on rowing.zone and I would love to hear back from you. What are the things I missed? What are the things that you discovered that I overlooked? Thank you very much for watching until the end. Go to rmtrading.com if you want to have your video analyzed as well. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Like, share and subscribe. That's the only thing that's going to help to grow that channel. All the best to you. Bye-bye. Ketilborg style, a good one to imitate. Um, I, I think to a certain degree, yes, uh, because his fluidity is awesome. His ability to keep the upper body is great. I think he pivots quite early, but that's just his style. Uh, can you be fast with this? Uh, well, duh. <laughs> Being second at the Olympics, this is a lot of people would give everything to get there. So it is awesome, awfully fast. It is 
very, very, very quick. But every now and then, there's an athlete that comes along who does have the physique and the technique to have a punchy drive, and that's going to get a bit of extra advantage. And this is what happened um, with the It's that simple. So, is is Ketibos style not effective? No, it is great. It is a beautiful rowing style that paid off. It brought him an Olympic silver, and you have to achieve an Olympic A final first, or even Olympic participation, then Olympic A final, then an Olympic medal. And there are not a lot of people in the world who achieve this in a single. So yes, the style is absolutely staggeringly great. Um, it looks more polished than Antusco style, but Antusco style and, and Dami Martin style are more punchy and they allow quicker and more drastic speed changes. And um, there was a race between Drysdale and Borg where Borg had a very similar, I don't want to call it issue, but well, Drysdale had this punchy upper body motion at um, around mid-drive that got him the advantage over Borg at the very last instance. And Borg had an, had an injury before and and surgery and all of that, but it is still a fact. Uh, Drysdale's style allowed him to have a more drastic speed change at the uh, at, at Henley. And now at the Olympics, Ntusko's style allowed Ntusko's to have a more drastic speed change over Sperry Nielsen's and Ketil Borg's style. And that's what I think in, in the aftermath is so interesting about this Olympic final. It's two different styles in four boats and these are the fastest singles at the Olympics. Super interesting.